Thank you. The final item of business is a member's business debate on motion 13701 in the name of Patrick Harvey on social enterprises working to tackle child poverty. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Can I ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons now? And I call on Patrick Harvey to open the debate. Mr Harvey, please. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And can I uh, thank those colleagues who have added their names to this uh, motion. Uh, opportunity to debate this uh, and in a quirk of parliamentary timetabling we might rehearse some of the, the same arguments that we had yesterday uh, in the debate on the social enterprise world forum which was brought in government time but i wanted to, to bring this motion to to do two things firstly to raise awareness amongst members of the work uh, that one particular smallish social enterprise in uh, in the south side of glasgow is doing a, a parallel exchange uh, but also the uh, wider application that their work might have throughout Scotland, the potential for it to be rolled out. But secondly, the other purpose of the debate is to place that issue and that work into the wider context that we're all uh, tragically familiar with about the scale and impact of child poverty uh, in Scotland and the, the way in which uh, the work of uh, Apparel Exchange can engage with that. So first of all, what are they? they they're a, a relatively new emerging social enterprise. They're dedicated uh, to school re uniform reuse, recognising that school uniforms are a costly part of school life, costly both in financial terms and in environmental terms, uh, as we see the, the large amount of uh, material uh, that essentially is used for a very short time before ending up in landfill and in seeking ways to reduce both these financial and environmental costs uh, they're also seeking to ensure access to high quality uniforms uh, for everybody in uh, the schools that they work with and they are working in partnership with particular schools working their way across Glasgow first of all as I say in the south side looking to develop services that collect sort clean uh, sell and redistribute school uniforms and do so in a way that ensures access to, uh, to clothing that's compliant with each individual school's uniform policy. And since the start of this year, they've been working initially with four schools from their base at Shawlands Arcade, uh, and they've engaged with parents at parent teacher evenings, as well as organizing collections and begun their series of uniform sales. And all of that is informing how they'll uh, seek to, to work with more schools in the future. They've secured support from Firstport and from the European Institute of Innovation and Technology's Climate Kick Business Accelerator program. Uh, and they're investing a, and testing a, the, the development uh, of the concept uh, of their work. And hopefully, as I say, it will be rolled out more widely. Uh, since I, I drafted the motion, uh, some of the statistics have, have changed. They've uh, now processed nearly 4,000 garments. So you can add one more uh, flight to the, the carbon equivalent saving uh, that's been mentioned in the motion. Uh, they've held a, a number of big sales, mega sales they call them, over the, the summer which attracted families from right across the south side and they've had good feedback uh, on the accessibility of their service, the low price and the high quality that they're able to provide uh, and the knowledge uh, that this is good in environmental terms. They're also launching uh, at the moment their free uniform package uh, in particular to a relatively small number at first but a, a number of uh, foster children uh, and asylum seeker and refugee families. Uh, and they do expect demand for that new service to grow. Uh, and I gather that this week they're also looking to move uh, to a new uh, larger premises. So this is clearly an opportunity that's got potential. Uh, and I hope that what Apparel Exchange are learning about providing this service could be replicated and, and, and reproduced uh, around Scotland as well. In referring to that debate that we had yesterday, uh, there were a number of projects, not just those that I, I mentioned, but those that a number of members mentioned, where social enterprise has a knack, a really good knack, of joining up the social, environmental, and economic priorities together. Uh, and this response to the financial and environmental costs of school uniforms is only one part of the wider work that needs to go on uh, to address the costs involved in accessing what should be free to all, their basic education. Child Poverty Action Group and, and Glasgow City Council, for example, have worked well on the wider issues of the cost of the school day. 
addressing the, the costs involved in, not just in clothing, but in travel to school, school food, school trips, after school activities, and much more. Uh, and the, the, the need to identify ways of minimizing these costs to reduce the pressure on family budgets, to make sure that all young people can gain access to the opportunities that education has to offer them, regardless of their family income. And just this month, uh, CPAG and NHS Health Scotland have launched a toolkit uh, to support this action uh, on, on uh, uh, child poverty in schools. And I also want to draw attention to the report from the Education and Skills Committee uh, of this Parliament, which has brought forward some useful recommendations around surveying uh, education authorities to establish the extent of charges for in-school activities, the impact uh, of that on low-income families, uh, and identifying ways to reduce the excessively expensive or unnecessary parts of school uniform that really shouldn't be required and create unnecessary cost burdens uh, on families. The context in which all of this sits is, of course, the level of child poverty that exists in our society. And Child Poverty Action Group, as members right across the chamber will know, have worked hard to make sure that we're challenging uh, the, the status quo on that. Scotland already has a higher rate of child poverty than much of Europe. Uh, and it's likely to rise in coming years with the Institute for Fiscal Studies, for example, projecting that UK-wide child poverty could rise to exceed one in three children in the coming years unless the UK government does change policies. Poverty wages, which are still permitted under UK minimum wage law, continue. Uh, and the inadequacy of our social security system as a safety net against poverty is getting worse, with welfare reform as a major driver of recent increases in child poverty. So we need to look also at the devolved aspects of the social security system and the opportunity uh, to go further than we have so far. And members will be aware of the Give Me Five campaign, the, the coalition of organizations campaigning on child poverty, looking for a, a top up uh, of five pounds per week uh, on child benefit. Uh, we believe that the Scottish government should be using its powers and the, the most recent legislation on social security uh, gives the, the government a duty to consider that action and we'll continue to make the case uh, for the opportunity to use that power to lift uh, 30,000 children out of poverty, but also to help increase the, family, the, the incomes of families across Scotland, including those who are just above the poverty line. And now that the, the Scottish Government has committed to introducing a, an income supplement for low-income families, uh, I know that the One in Five campaign are committed to continuing to make the pressure uh, to, to, to make the case that that income supplement comes in the form of a child benefit top-up. Presiding officer, let me, let me finish just by returning <coughs> to a parallel exchange uh, and relating some of the experience of, of Izzy Erickson, the founding director. She says, the families who've used our service over the summer have given us really good feedback. The most important thing is that there's no one single reason why someone comes to a service like ours. For some, it is because it's all they can afford. For others, it's because we're working in partnership with the school and they support that community involvement. And for others, it's because they want to recognize the huge levels of waste involved and they want to do their bit to support the environment. I think social enterprise does have a huge opportunity to do much more uh, on the issues of child poverty, both prevention and alleviation of child poverty. Government also needs to play its part at every level, UK, Scottish and local. Uh, I look forward to the debate and look forward to the Minister's comments. Thank you very much. Uh, open debate, speeches of four minutes, please. Bill Kidd to be followed by Michelle Ballantyne. Mr Kidd, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, I'd like very much to thank Patrick Harvey for bringing forward uh, this motion about social enterprises working to tackle child poverty because this provides us with an opportunity to highlight the work of organisations like Apparel Exchange who are operating across different constituencies in Scotland to alleviate the burden on low-income families and it also provides us with the opportunity to engage with and examine a fundamental issue, and that is child poverty. Work done by social enterprises and charities is pivotal, and it changes lives. This work can be amplified by effective and ambitious legislation like the Child Poverty Act passed here in the Scottish Parliament last year. As Patrick Harvey has highlighted, a parallel exchange's work with schools to encourage reuse of clothing based in Glasgow, 
and they sell good quality second-hand unif uh, second school uniforms at a low cost, with many items costing only £2.50. This innovative idea is not only good for the environment, um, but it crucially takes some of the financial pressure off of parents as their children start the new school year. And I would like to thank all of those involved in the Parallel Exchange, from the founder, Izzy Erickson, to her hard-working colleagues and all of the volunteers for their dedicated work. I'm sure it is this dedication which has turned this start-up into a success so quickly. As stated in the motion, within the first five months, amazingly, Uniform re Reuse saved the equivalent of four return flights from Edinburgh to New York. I'm very pleased to say a parallel exchange has also just started working uh, directly with Blair Dardy Primary School. That's a school within my constituency of Glasgow, Annie's Land. And furthermore, this enterprise has provided families right across Glasgow with affordable school uniforms. Transformational change comes when the work done by charities and social enterprises is echoed by decisions made in government and in parliament, where we share the ambition of the eradication of inequality. It's our collective duty here in the chamber to tackle inequality and to stand up for what is right. If we put effective policy and strong legislation in place, which I believe we are doing, we can amplify this collective effort across the parties and we can accelerate change. From the SNP point of view, we have made it clear that our priority is creating an equitable society. And this means that those born into economic disadvantage are provided with support to rightly move them to a level playing field. We believe that reduction of poverty is about upholding human rights. Beyond this, we believe that this makes sense for all of us. Fewer people living in poverty, in poverty equates to a better performing economy and a more prosperous nation. And the Child Poverty Act shows how Scotland is leading the UK in tackling child poverty. In March of this year, the Scottish Government released the first delivery plan relating to this legislation. This is called Every Child, Every Chance. And one of the initiatives of the delivery plan is the school clothing grant for £100 per child per year towards school uniform costs through the new national entitlement scheme. An additional million pounds of Scottish Government funding to the Fair Food Fund has also been given to tackle food insecurity outside of term time. 150,000 of this will go to Cash for Kids to help community organisations support children over the school holidays with activities and access to meals. Collaboration with social enterprises directly improves the lives of children now. Crucially, what all of this means is that children and their futures are, as they should be, being prioritised and protected. And together with social enterprises, we here can work to reduce child poverty and give every child every chance for the best start in life. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call Michelle Ballantyne to be followed by James Kelly. Ms Ballantyne, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I would like to begin by joining Patrick Harvey in congratulating his local social enterprise, Apparel Exchange, on the work they do. And I'd also like to take the opportunity to highlight the work of Greening Gore Bridge, a social enterprise in my own region. They collect good quality second-hand school uniform from local residents and provide an exchange service where you can con contribute a small donation or nothing at all, so long as the clothes go to a good home. Not only does their work reduce carbon, water and waste footprints, it means more money in the pockets of local families. It's absolutely clear that social enterprises play an important role in our communities, helping the vulnerable and inspiring a new generation of entrepreneurs, and it is vital we support their development. But I'm going to go slightly off piece now, because I have a young 16-year-old by the name of Alex in my office this week on uh, work experience from school. And I asked him what he thought about child poverty, and he wrote me some words. So I'm actually going to use that for my speech today. So this comes from a young 16-year-old boy, and this is what he said. It makes me think it is time to step back and take a look at ourselves in this chamber. For too long, parties have played political football with this issue, cheering on when someone else is perceived to commit a foul. The nuance and detail from a complex issue has been removed, an issue which simply cannot be solved through ideological policies or simply increased spending. We need to take a step back and look at the bigger picture around poverty. Many different factors, such as mental health, 
lack of family structure and falling education standards have been overlooked and left to the side while the situation continues to deteriorate. Poverty looks like the school pupil who must work a part-time job to help provide for his or her family. Poverty looks like the single mum who, despite being in work, still cannot earn enough to feed her children. Poverty can simply be a lonely pensioner who can only afford to heat one room in his or her house. Presiding officer, all parties have tried to tackle poverty in flawed ways, looking at a narrow view of what poverty is and failing to see that it doesn't just affect individuals but entire communities. Too often there is a lack of communication between services, with multiple organisations visiting the same family without ever talking to each other or really touching upon what led them there. Managing or even just containing families without offering them a chance to improve their lives. Government after government has simply spent more and more money to try and fix child poverty through the welfare state and more money pumped into schools in the hope it will pay off, yet it hasn't worked. Child poverty in Scotland has been on the rise since 2007, when 200,000 children were in poverty, and that number is expected to reach 400,000 by 200, 2027. Meanwhile, a stream of legislation has been introduced at great cost and with little effect. What these proposals fail to tackle are driving factors of poverty, such as broken family structure. These tax and spend policies have failed us consistently and repeatedly. They have failed to decrease the attainment gap in Scotland. They have failed to give, to give adequate incomes to those in poverty. Even with high employment across the UK, 220,000 ch Scottish children will not receive nutritious meals this week as their parents don't have the time or wage to create a proper meal. A happy home life, working parents, a proper diet and a robust education, these are the things that provide a solid foundation for solving child poverty. This, something that, this is something that starts in our communities. It starts in the classroom, not in a food bank. By tackling the drivers of poverty, not the symptoms, we can fix this issue for good. Presiding officer, it is time that we as a parliament do what is right for the people of Scotland and focus instead on long-term solutions. By reinforcing the quality of service provided by teachers, employment specialists and mental health professionals, we can prevent the cycle of children growing up in hungry families for good. I haven't changed a word. Thank you. No, thank you. Uh, I take it that was all in quotes, just for the OR. So it's right, thank you. Uh, I now call James Kelly to be followed by Angela Constance. Mr Kelly, please. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, I'd like to start by congratulating Patrick Harvey in securing the, 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 the debate on tonight's motion. Um, as Patrick Harvey said, this is the, you wait a long time for debates on social enterprise to come along and we get <laughs> two in a row. Um, but I think in a lot of ways this is a very good debate because what it does is it gives a, a practical example of a social enterprise uh, working in Glasgow and it looks at a particular issue they're addressing, school uniforms, and links it to tackling child poverty. So I think it's a very focused debate and therefore a very useful debate following on from yesterday afternoon. As Patrick Harvey said, the, the work of a parallel exchange uh, in Shawlands has, has been excellent and I'm glad to hear that more progress has been made since he submitted the motion. Uh, provision of school uniforms uh, is a big issue for low income fa families, um, particularly as some uniforms are uniquely designed and therefore that boosts the cost uh, or increases the cost beyond £130 uh, quoted in the motion. And that, that puts a lot of families in a very difficult position. Some having to go into debt are not even able to afford school uniforms. So the, the social enterprise um, organised by Apparel Exchange ensuring uh, the, the, the redistribution of school uniforms not only ensures that people are able to acquire school uniforms at a, a lower cost, but as, as Patrick Harvey pointed out, it's more environmentally friendly. So I think it's a, an excellent uh, piece of work. Um, I think Patrick Harvey is also right to comment on the work of the Child Poverty Action Group, which do, has done so much over a long period of years to highlight issues uh, around child poverty and also work on uh, school uniforms. I think there are uh, some important issues that you know have got to be addressed. You know, with over 200,000 
uh, children in Scotland in child poverty. I think this is a massive issue uh, for the Parliament. Uh, the motion is right to look at the effect that the UK Tory government's welfare cuts have had. Uh, there's no doubt that, they have put the, that they, those policies have pushed uh, more families into poverty and more kids uh, into child poverty. Um, and it, it's had a, a direct uh, impact on, on vulnerable families. And, and therefore, politicians and governments, and I say this to the Tory benches, have got to take responsibility for that. Um, there's also a Scottish Parliament responsibility. Uh, Patrick Harvey uh, mentioned the Give Me Five campaign. Uh, that's, some, that's a campaign that focused on the last Scottish budget and increasing child benefit by five pounds. And I'm sure that'll be a campaign that will feature again uh, in the forthcoming Scottish bu budget. So there's a responsibility on all arms of uh, government in order to take action to address these issues. I think in terms of social enterprises, they are more ethical and they, ca they can therefore uh, provide the conditions that will help ta tackle child poverty. Uh, one of the statistics that came out in the debate yesterday was that 72% of people employed in social enterprises uh, are paid their equal living wage. And that makes a big impact, particularly somewhere like Glasgow, where 150,000 people aren't paid the real living wage. Um, so that, that helps address, I uh, think makes a contribution to addressing child poverty. So I think uh, Patrick Harvey's debate here this evening has addressed some important issues. It's given us a good practical example, but I think there are also wider political issues uh, that uh, all parliaments need to address if we want to be serious about tackling child poverty. Thank you. Uh, I call Angela Constance, who is followed by Alison Harris, who was the last speaker in the open debate. Ms Constance. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I too want to congratulate Mr Harvey on securing this debate. It is particularly uh, timely, uh, given that the Social Enterprise uh, World Forum has uh, this week come home uh, to Scotland. And that's an opportunity to showcase everything that is marvellous uh, about the social enterprise movement uh, in Scotland, both in terms of its contribution to our economy, uh, but also uh, in tackling poverty and inequality. And it was also acknowledged in the government-led debate yesterday that local, locally-led uh, social enterprises can reach uh, and support families who are struggling uh, in a dignified manner. And although social enterprises do not exist to let government at any level uh, off the hook, uh, they do bring um, something uh, to the solution and they certainly add um, more than a bit uh, of magic. Uh, ultimately, I believe that at its core, uh, poverty is about lack of income and that it is uh, ultimately uh, a political uh, issue. But on a positive note, this parliament uh, has a united ambition uh, to end child poverty and we have all signed up to uh, ambitious statutory uh, targets uh, to end child poverty uh, by 2030 and of course the contribution of social enterprise uh, is reflected uh, in the child poverty delivery plan uh, that the minister uh, the cabinet secretary will take forward uh, and of course the, the challenge for us all will be to ensure that with the uh, delivery of this uh, plan and in future plans that the actions in it uh, are well evidenced and will have maximum impact uh, on reducing uh, child poverty. And Mr Harvey is also uh, absolutely factually uh, correct to point to the evidence that uh, UK welfare reforms are indeed driving more children uh, and a million more children across the, the UK uh, into uh, poverty uh, by the end uh, of this decade. But uh, officer, for the purpose of this debate, I wanted to focus uh, on two social enterprises in my own constituency, started up and led by fabulous women uh, who, like Apparel Exchange, are helping children uh, to access school uniforms and other provisions uh, and other supports, and also to take uh, the opportunity to invite the new Cabinet Secretary to my constituency uh, to see for herself uh, the invaluable work done by Kids Eco and the West Lothian uh, School Uniform Bank. The West Lothian School Uniform Bank uh, was set up in 2015 and this has gone from strength to strength. Uh, the aim of the School Uniform Bank is to provide brand new school uniforms to children and families who are experiencing financial hardship, but also to supply warm coats, shoes and other equipment uh, required uh, for the school day, such as school bags, pencils, pencil cases, etc. 
And there has been a, a marked rise in the number of referrals uh, from May 2017 to August 2018, now sitting at 428 referrals. And this has increased by uh, over 50% uh, from last year. And noticeably, over 50% of referrals come from families who are in work and make up uh, you know, the largest single uh, percentage uh, or grouping of cases. And alarmingly, uh, only 78 uh, out of the 428 referrals received were actually eligible uh, for the school uniform uh, grant uh, from the local council. Now, it has to be said, uh, West Lothian Council, to their credit, uh, give parents £120 in the form of a school uniform grant, uh, eligible parents, uh, that's the highest in Scotland. Uh, but of course this is a, a one-off uh, yearly payment uh, offered to people in receipt of particular benefits or whose income does not succeed uh, uh, £16,000. Uh, and the School Uniform Bank says that while this is uh, generous, uh, many children uh, you know, grow a lot between August uh, and uh, Christmas and outgrow uh, the school uniform uh, that has been purchased. And of course, as Patrick Harvey says, the average uh, cost of a school uniform um, is certainly in excess of £100. Kizikoa is also an award-winning uh, social enterprise uh, based uh, in West Lothian with a uh, shop in Bathgate and a uh, shop uh, and Livingston. It's set up for families who want to buy high-quality, pre-loved uh, children's clothes, toys, and equipment at an affordable price. They're environmentally friendly and reuse, recycle and upcycle over five tonnes of goods every month, which would otherwise uh, be sent uh, to, 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 to landfill. And they've also uh, set up a range of other uh, community support projects and also the Kids Start Bags, uh, which is a nice uh, complementary um, uh, bag and um, handcrafted bag of everyday essential items not just for newborns but also for, for young children so it very much complements and builds upon uh, the, the, the baby box so I just want to uh, end uh, presiding officer uh, by putting on record my thanks and appreciation uh, to Tracy Murdoch the founder of Kids Eco, and to the women uh, who set up the West Lothian School Uniform Bank uh, Kirsten and Moira Shemelt, Rachel Anand, uh, Mary Harkness, uh, Vera Tens Rebecca Summers and Colette Moran uh, for everything uh, that they're doing for West Lothian Wains and helping families uh, put clothes on the backs of their children. You'll get used to my wavy pen at some point, uh, Miss Constance. Uh, Alison Harris, please. Mr. Residing Officer, and I'll look out for your wavy pen. Right. I too would like to thank Patrick Harvey for bringing this member's business to the Chamber this evening. And I also echo the sentiments of those who have spoken in the Chamber by congratulating Apparel Exchange and the work they do in Glasgow. It is a heartening thought, now that the new school year is underway, with all the excitement it brings for pupils, that the summer pop-up shops across Glasgow have made the transition for many families in that area easier and more affordable. The concept surrounding these pop-up shops is an excellent idea on many levels. Apart from the recycling element, which the Apparel Exchange have described as diverting, well, I've got it down here as 2,100 garments, but I did hear that it's obviously increased from disposal and landfill. We, we also have this unique service which allows parents to have access to school uniforms. You know, this motion made me think back to my mum telling me about her school days, where my grandmother would make do and mend, and a uniform would actually last you for the whole school year. And I, I'm sure I'm not alone when I say that we all remember starting school and your skirt was maybe touching your ankles and your blazer took you until you were actually leaving school before it actually fitted. <laughs> if I compare that with today, you know, we're living in a much more disposable culture where there's not the same tendency to make do and mend. We tend to throw away, and I think possibly without appreciating the effect that this has on landfill sites and the costs associated with this. I think it's an excellent idea that parents can access initiatives like this for school clothing. We accept that uniforms do cost money, especially when you take into account families that have more than one child at school. And putting uniform aside, families also have additional costs for their obligatory school shoes, school bags, they've also to purchase. So I would like to see social enterprises running these type of pop-up shops in conjunction with schools and private enterprises to help parents and families throughout the whole of Scotland as a whole. As much as this is members' business offers a chance to highlight the work of social enterprise, 
the, the key point remains that as elected representatives, we have to ensure the framework is intact for tackling child poverty. The Scottish Government's target to reduce this figure to 10% by 2030 is commendable, and I'm pleased that this Parliament is dedicated to an ambitious target. Poverty and the attainment gap needs constant attention and tackled with a multifaceting and joined up approach. As part of this monitoring, in, in summer 2017, the Scottish Ministers tasked a body of persons with providing advice on the reduction of poverty and inequality in Scotland. Subsequently, the Scottish Parliament enacted the, Child's, the Child Poverty Scotland Bill to establish a Poverty and Inequality Commission with functions relating to child poverty targets described in that bill. It would promote efficiency, effectiveness and economy in the exercise of public functions for the two functions to be combined and delivered by a single body. Article 2.2 of this order expands the functions of the commissions accordingly. However, as my colleague Adam Tomkins said during his contribution to the Stage 3 Poverty Scotland Bill, we cannot successfully tackle child poverty by thinking of our income alone. We must also think about education, the employment prospects of families and parents and guardians and the range of other issues. And that is why we welcome the more broad brush, holistic and universal approach to an anti-poverty strategy. Before I end my speech this evening, let me briefly acknowledge social enterprise in the wider community and congratulate all those involved for their time, commitment and efforts. Deputy Presiding Officer, I welcome this member's debate this evening and I wholeheartedly support all of my colleagues in their endeavours to reduce child poverty in Scotland. Thank you. Thank you very much. I now call on Aileen Campbell to close the Government. Cabinet Secretary, please. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer, and like uh, so many other speakers this evening, I'm also really pleased to be able to, during what others have uh, uh, already uh, spoken about, what coincidentally uh, is the same week as uh, Scotland is welcoming the world to 1,400 delegates from around the world to celebrate social enterprises at what is the 10th anniversary of the Social Enterprise World Forum. And it is apt that we recognise this week the work of Apparel Exchange, which Patrick Harvey outlined is delivering a much needed service that tackles the cost of school uniform, not just in terms of the monetary cost, but also as he, as he spoke about the cost to the environment eh, regarding additional landfill. And so often, as is the case, a social enterprise joins up the dots eh, on a challenge and generates a, a solution. And eh, certainly I enjoyed a eh, hearing from Angela Constance, who did so much work on this uh, issue anyway around child poverty and social enterprise and would absolutely be delighted uh, to come to our constituency and visit uh, Kids and Co. And also while I'm getting the chance to speak about social enterprise, maybe we'd just like to plug uh, one in my own uh, constituency, maybe not technically a, a, a social enterprise, but delivering a lot of work, similar work to what we've heard about this evening. It's Biggers Womankind who do so much work to ensure that people who are struggling get the support they need in that discreet and dignified way that we know needs to happen more and more often and certainly as the mother of two wee boys of my own I know just how quickly uh, kids grow out of their school clothes and the ever increasing growing pile of school jerseys that I have uh, piling up waiting for my youngest uh, son to be able to use them when he goes to school as so often is the case with the second sibling they don't get their own new stuff they get their hand-me-downs from their older brother or sister but certainly I think that ability where you don't have a uh, um, bigger brothers and sisters or that ability to be able to easily go out and buy your own uh, school uniforms or replace school uniforms I know how lucky I am to be able to go out and do that and to make sure that my boys have the ability to take fully uh, part in the opportunities available to them that that's not available to every child and I think that's undoubtedly why we're all uh, passionately speaking about the need to ensure that every child has their own fair chance to flourish and not just the few that have the means to be able to do so and that's why Patrick Harris is absolutely right to contextualise this, uh, this incredible work of apparel exchange within that wider problem uh, in that we're trying to tackle child poverty and it's not just the role of social enterprises to tackle uh, this unfairness but governments as well and again social, uh, Angela Constance was right to point out that social enterprises should never let government uh, off the hook. And so it's right that we uh, do what we can as a government and that's why uh, in March this year we published our first tackling child poverty delivery plan setting out the concrete action that we will take in the period up to 2022 in order to make strong progress to a better future. 
The plan is structured around the three drivers of child poverty uh, reduction, increasing incomes from working earnings, reducing household costs and maximising incomes from social security and benefits in kind. And it also outlines action to help children who are living in poverty now to improve their lives and outcomes and to avoid them becoming the parents of the next generation that grow up in poverty. And even in the short time since its publication, our plan is already starting to deliver real and tangible change. Of significance to the debate tonight, members will already be aware that we've established a new £100 national minimum school clothing grant beginning in the 2018-19 academic year. Estimated to benefit uh, over, over 120,000 families this year alone, this will mean that for the first time all eligible families, regardless of where they live, will have access to the same minimum level of su financial support for school clothing. And aligned to that, we also know that providing uniforms is only one part of the challenge that faces parents in meeting the cost of the school day. And we recognise the work of the Child Poverty Action Group and others to voice the reality facing parents and children across Scotland. And that's why we're supporting them to continue their work with the schools and authorities to promote awareness of the financial barriers that pupils from low income families face at school, the ways in which these barriers prevent full participation and can undermine achievement and the practical steps that can be taken by schools and others to reduce and remove them. And that's also why in our programme for government, we have committed an additional two million pounds worth of funding to step up work to tackle food insecurity amongst children in Scotland. And we will work with COSLA, local authorities, the third sector, social enterprises and other stakeholders to build the momentum, trial new approaches and develop a clear plan of action for the future to eradicate holiday hunger. Again, working together is so often what is necessary to find the solution uh, to what some of the problems that are uh, existing uh, and uh, showing themselves to be uh, prevalent across the country. But that said, that all being said, all that work and all that effort from social enterprise and from this government supported by the parliament, I think Patrick Harvey is right to point out that the UK welfare reforms are pushing more children into poverty. And while I uh, I absolutely um, I really appreciated Michelle Ballantyne's intern's words uh, that were in many ways correct. I think she and her party would need to do well to be able themselves to step out and look in at just what the impact of the UK welfare, welfare cuts have meant to families around Scotland. Annual welfare spending will be cut by almost £4 billion in Scotland by 2020. And if the Scottish Government's projections show that if we took no action, cuts and an ongoing austerity could lead to more than one in three children living in poverty uh, across uh, in Scotland by 2030. Those statistics, taking four billion pounds worth out of social security, meaning that if the, and, uh, and also if the Scottish government did nothing, meaning that one in three children would be living in poverty by 2030, all of that together shows that no social enterprise could cope with the impact of that. And that's why it's important, I think, that we recognise that it's not just the work of social enterprises to plug this gap. The Scottish government needs to do what it can with the powers that it ha has at its disposal to try and mitigate as best they can. But I think the UK government and Michelle pa Ballantyne and her party need to understand just the impact of her party's actions are having on families across uh, the country. And I think, you know, if we get that recognition, if we get that realisation, then we can start to maybe have the long-term impact on poverty that Michelle Ballantyne's intern spoke about is so necessary for our country. But to root it back to the um, social enterprises, yesterday we did speak about rebalancing the economy and how we can rebalance that economy through the use of social enterprises, about that value we attach to human uh, capacity and creativity and the talents that we have across our country. And I think a parallel exchange shows that creativity, that innovation, that ability to reach out, connect with a community, to tackle some of the entrenched problems that they are facing, to be resilient enough to cope with them within themselves. And I think if we empower more of our communities to do the same, then we can have the impact that we want to seek but it needs everybody to take and play their part this Scottish government is well up for trying to do what it can and strain straining every sinew to make sure that we'd have the ability to say with confidence that every child in this country is born to be able to to have the to take up the opportunities that are rightfully theirs and to make sure that this country can be the best place in which we can grow up but we need to have the powers enabled to do that or we need at least to have the partnership and the recognition from the UK government that their welfare reforms are damaging those uh, opportunities for children for too many children across the country but until that moment we'll continue to work in partnership with social enterprise support their innovation support their creativity ensure that every child has their fair chance to flourish and uh, again congratulate a uh, Patrick Harvey for uh, bringing this motion for debate.
Thank you. That concludes the debate and I close this meeting.